Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk you through how to strike the ball more consistently than you ever have done before. Okay, so striking the ball before you hit the ground is arguably one of the most important things you can do in a round of golf. If you hit ball than turf, you'll find the middle of the club face more often and also that will lead to a whole world of other benefits. Put it this way, if you hit the ball at the middle more often, you're gonna have more consistent ball speed, more consistent launch angle, more consistent spin rate. So not only will you be better from a directional sense, but also controlling the height and the distance of your ball, which are key skills to be able to perform better when you go on the course. So what we're gonna spend our time looking at today is our angle of, of attack. Our angle of attack is whether our club is descending into the back of the ball or ascending or rising into the ball. But I'm gonna give you my couple of thoughts on how I achieve a 100% success rate in a downward angle of attack. Let's see how this goes. Felt pretty good. Okay, pretty typical 163. 4.8 down, let's go again. That felt slightly pulled, let the right hand go a bit. Okay, five degrees down. A little longer on that one because I pulled it. Let's try and hit one a little smoother. Should be about 160. Oh, 159.6. Okay, so three balls hit, three negative angles of attack. So that basically means that as I'm striking the ball, the club is working downwards into the back of it. What you'll notice with a good ball strike is that it's always negative. What you notice for someone who doesn't quite hit the ball as well is that they might have three degrees down, hit one flush, they might have two degrees up, hit one heavy, they might have one level and hit it okay. And the only downside there is that there's too much of a variance. So your launch angle could change, like I said, and it becomes very, very difficult for you to understand how far each club goes. All I want you to do is take the club at waist high, okay? With your arm, right arm fairly soft, left arm a little stronger as it would usually would be. Keep the club face uh, perpendicular to the floor. And then I want you to make a couple of swings, just go back two or three feet. And then I want you to turn your body and feel as if your, ha your grip pulls on the handle. So what you'll see as I go back and as the club reaches the top of my backswing, we'll see the club start to load the handle. Now this loading is vital for hitting a ball on the downward strike, okay? If I don't load the club enough, okay, which would look like this on the way back, then we're gonna to struggle to load it enough to deliver that downward strike. So what you should feel in this drill, with your grip, everything else in the same, is that as you turn your body to the left, you will actually feel as if you are pulling and applying some pressure to the handle, okay? And as it's rotating around us, we're gonna see the club face stay nice and square. Okay, just notice a few times. When you do this, you'll feel the need to have a softer grip. And if you're very right hand dominant, you'll feel as if you're trying to do this. Okay, all I want you to do is with a relaxed grip, I want you to make a backswing two or three feet and then turn. And you'll feel that you are trying to accelerate the handle. You're not trying to accelerate the club head. Sequencing is huge here, okay? So I'm trying to rotate my body, that's keeping my chest speed up, that's keeping my arm speed up, and that's how I can keep the speed of the handle high through strike. Whereas if we stall our rotation, it'll get to a point where I can't keep the handle moving fast enough to stop the force and the momentum and the speed of this club overtaking my handle. Okay, so just do that a few times. And then what I want you to do is make a couple of swings when you're in your posture and you try and feel the same thing. So you're turning and loading the handle, okay? So we go up, we turn, 
and we load the handle. Again, that'll be a negative angle of attack, nine degrees down, okay? Maybe I don't need to rehearse it that much. But that drill should give you the feeling of what it's like to load the handle. So we go through a loading phase as we go from backswing into our transition into the downswing. That's our loading phase. And then with driver, there's more of an unloading phase. Okay? Then, when you do your practice swings and you hit some balls, try to feel that same grip pressure. But you flow some through impact where you're turning your body, the hips turn, the shoulders turn, that keeps the arm speed up, and that enables us to pull the handle around us for longer. It's no coincidence that the people who turn the least and that have the most open club face unload the club as early as they can. Okay, so if I get to the top of my club faces like this, okay, I'm gonna stall my body's turn, in which case I can't keep the handle moving for long enough without really opening the club face more. So I will unload the club and dump it and unload it into the ground. The feeling of this and the goal of this is to realize that impact happens as a consequence to what happens pre and post impact. That's why I don't really believe in impact bags and these things up against, you know, skirting boards and, and sides of doors because impact is not a finish line. Impact is a middle point between backswing and follow through. If I rehearse an impact bag feeling onto a real ball, that's how my swing would feel, okay? Short and stopping at impact. Whereas when we have this feeling of that lighter grip tension and the feeling of turning and pulling the handle around us, Suddenly, impact is a consequence. It's not a finish line, okay? So again, six and a half degrees down and no issue of applying a downward angle of attack, okay? So that drill has two parts to it. A, you're learning to sequence your, your turn of your body first and the effect that has on your ability to pull on the handle. You'll also notice that as I pull this grip around me, okay, as I work it in this rotational form, you'll see that my club face can stay nice and square. If I just try and shove the handle to the left, we can keep this club face super open, in which case you hit it over there and possibly deal with some, ha some hosel strikes. So we need to realize that this handle works on an arc around us. It doesn't go straight left, it works around. Okay, so the handle works around, around. That is my main feeling. If I'm ever nervous or if I ever want to make sure I hit ball first, it is a softening of the grip and the focus of that I've got to keep my body turning, I've got to keep the handle speed up, and I don't think about hitting down on the ball. It's purely a consequence to my sequencing and my ability to keep the handle speed high and the handle moving around me. So I hope that helps. I hope it makes sense. Please feel free to drop any comments in the, in the section below. And if you ever need any help, just get in touch. But that's essentially how I would feel I create a downward end of attack. And it's helped lots of my students suddenly become really good ball strikers. Also, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. There's gonna be plenty more content coming. I'm trying to post two or three times a week and I'm trying to help you guys get better one video at a time. So take care and I'll see you all soon.